Hey everyone, welcome back to Dark Forest for the next episode in our Let's Play series. So we are now into March and it's time we can start getting some new crop sown so we can do the grass and the oats. Uh, before we do the oats though we need to play with our new field. Uh, so in between episodes I've cleared a few more trees in this area of land. So we've got two containers just there on the trailers. They're both full and ready to be taken to be sold. All the shorter logs from the end of the trees I've loaded up onto the the other trailer which I put the log poles on the sides. So that costs us two and a half thousand uh, to add those on. But we've now got those to use as well. So first job is to plow in the new field which I'm going to put in over here. I don't want to go too close to the building just yet. Just in case we want to use that space for more buildings. So we'll start around about here. Uh, get that onto a low crate fields. And away we go. So yeah, so the plan for today is to get this field plowed in. Get all the stones removed from it. Spread it with lime. Then we can sow it with oats. And then we can sow the other field that we plowed in over winter. Uh, with grass. Uh, which will then become our field for hay. I've got a few small logs there still from a few of the extra trees I cut down so I don't want to come too close to the trees just yet because we will need to continue clearing those at, at some point well yeah we'll get a decent sized field in here which should give us plenty of oats then for getting some horses later in the year and also a bit of extra straw as well that we can use for bedding Again, I don't want to come too far over to where the sheep are. So I think we'll bring it to around about here. And then we'll start straightening off to 90 degrees. So it's not going to be the largest field to start with, but it's uh, an extra field. I say it gives us the opportunity to get some uh, oats in the ground. So we'll head back over to this way so we'll straighten up to 180 and then we'll connect up to the other bit and then we'll get it all uh, plowed in Okay, last couple of passes and this field is all ploughed in. And so it's not the largest of fields, but it'll do just to get us some oats for this year. And once we clear a few more trees, we can always expand on this field when we need to. And there we go. That is the new field created. I'll switch off a low crate fields. Well, is it all, uh, as I said before, it always puts that little patch of plowed ground in when you lower it down if you don't. So we'll get this dropped off, and then we need to get the skid steer with the stone picker on. So we can get all these stones picked up and then put them into the crusher. What I may do first is get the 
the short logs we've got on the trailer over to the sawmill to get those sold just so we can use the ramps to put that trailer next to the stone crusher because uh, we are going to need to unload the uh, the stone picker because I think, think it's almost full from the last field we did I'll just get that dropped off there for a sec so yeah we'll get the logs over to the sawmill so we can get these sold that'll free up this trailer to use then as a platform for reaching the uh, stone crusher okay so let's get this pile of offcut sold uh, one thing I was considering doing was putting in a production sawmill and I was having to think about the way to go um, the same with the horses as well um, is doing a thing similar to what I did on I think it was back on Crater Lake I did uh, but mainly only did it for farm workers like when we were hiring a worker in the field is that we can't hire a worker until we provide a place for the worker to live as we we're in the middle of the forest in the middle of nowhere uh, currently so I was thinking of extending that kind of concept to production buildings as well in terms of a, a small production building we need to provide at least one house for the worker or so one worker and then larger buildings to possibly three workers for a really large production building uh, could also do it on a scale of the house as well larger house may provide two workers where a small one will only provide one worker uh, but I was thinking of doing the similar thing as well with the the horses because I do want to use the horse helper mod or the horse trainer mod I really don't fancy uh, having to ride the horses all the time so I was thinking before we do that we'll need to provide at least one house for the horse helper and then if we do want to hire any workers for field work uh, we'll also have to provide one house for each worker so if we want to hire multiple workers at the same time we'll need multiple dwellings so that's kind of an idea I was thinking of I did it on Crater Lake but I only did it for the farm worker um, so I could hire one for, uh, worker in the field I didn't do it for production buildings so we need to get those folded down and get the ramps down as well so let me know what you uh, think in the comments about that idea and doing it that way that would mean we would need to start looking at clearing an area to get like some trailers in for workers to potentially live in uh, but we've got plenty of space, uh, space on our land so that wouldn't be an issue and the trees that we'd clear to create that space would probably make enough money to afford to buy the the dwelling so yeah let me know what you uh, your thoughts are on that in the uh, comments it'd be great to hear uh, what you think of that so we'll get the stone crusher up to where the trailer is and we'll keep it up there because it's kind of in the middle of uh, the uh, the road down here now so it kind of makes sense to get it moved and one thing I didn't realise with this was you can actually put it into a transport mode although actually I don't know how I'm going to get the forks underneath it now to uh, lift that up <laughs> might have to put it back in the other mode to uh, be able to get the forks underneath but maybe I could have uh, dropped it on the trailer and then put it in transport mode it would have made it a lot easier to transport so yeah we'll get this up to the trailer if I can get it up there it's and sit on these forks very well uh, maybe if I put the forks underneath then put it in transport mode it will drop onto the forks which may make it a little bit easier to uh, manoeuvre what they really need is just under those box sections that they need some uh, fork um, points so you can slot the forks in So you can move it around on a forklift truck easier. Uh, we don't need to crush the stones for lime. We've got plenty of lime. Well, as we've found out with the previous fields we've done, that lime goes a very long way in that spreader. 
Uh, this is just more of a case we need to free up some space in the actual stone picker so we can uh, have the space in it to pick up the rest of the stones. We could just dump them on the ground um, but as we've got this we may as well uh, put it to use. Let's see if I can get that slightly close to the trailer. and then ends up pushing it a bit further away <laughs> to come back around this way again give it a nudge over that should be nope how did that pull that further away then right there we go I'm going to leave it there <laughs> Stop messing around with it, Simu's you're just making it worse. Right, so we'll go and get the uh, skid steer and get the stone picker on there. Uh, we'll also need to get the spreader underneath so we can actually unload that stone, uh, the stone crusher. Okay, so we'll get this unloaded. We've got 2,129 litres of stones in here. Still amazed that this uh, skid steer can actually pick this up with that much uh, weight in it. Don't know if that's just because the weight of the actual stone pick is extremely light. Right, let's get this turned on. Uh, I can't remember how this actually works now. Uh, I we just need to press I. There we go. So as last time, you need to wait for it to completely empty before you put any more in. As I found out that if you do put some more in, it reduces the maximum capacity that you can actually put in. So it's not actually quite going in there. So once that's completely unloaded, we can get the next load in. I'll set that off and then we'll start getting the stones picked up. Okay, so last few stones to pick up, and that should be this field all clear. We'll just double check again on the map because I'm bound to have probably missed a small section somewhere. So we'll go to this one, stones, get rid of the lime. Yeah, it looks like there's one just there to our right somewhere. Somewhere over there it is just in front of us, and that should be this field all clear of stones. So we'll get that switched off. I think the lime spreader is pretty much full now, so I don't think we can actually fit any more in the crusher just yet. So we'll drop that off there. Pretty sure there's a yeah, still 450 litres in there. Let's just move that out of the way and get this switched off as well. And we'll get the lime spread on this new field. They're 96% full on here, actually. I will say that'll be more than plenty to probably lime our fields three, four times over. That's how little it actually uses. last little bit of lime spreading and then we can get on with planting the oats in this field and then we'll do the grass in the the other field over there and that will be all our planting done for today uh, next time we'll cultivate the oilseed radish in into the other field that we've got over by the sawmill and then get that one sown with soybeans as that was the best crop to do following sorghum that we did in that field last year Get this little bit that I missed, and that's all the lime spreading done. 
Uh, one thing I will just check is the actual grass field, because we cut the grass before we ploughed it in. That is pretty much all fully fertilised. So when we come to sow that, I will unload the fertiliser from the seed drill. Um, it's not completely full. There are some patches where the bushes were and there was no grass that got cut or ploughed in. Um, but I don't think it'll be worth keeping the fertiliser in the seed drill as it will consume it all as if it was applying fertiliser like over the entire field where it's not going to be. Let's get this back in here and we'll, say we'll get the seed drill hooked up. And we may need to go up to the store and get some seed. Because I don't think we have any. We've got a bag of fertiliser there but I don't think we've got any seed left uh, from last time when we did the oil seed radish and the barley. So we may need to nip up the store and just get another bag of seed. Uh, one thing I want to try and do as well today is get a pressure washer put down somewhere so we can start washing our equipment off because it is getting very dirty. Let's get this hooked up and see how much seed we've got in here. Oh, it's full. 100 litres. Uh, 100%. 830 litres. So that should be enough to do the oats at least. So make sure that switch to oats. Uh, we do now have our first full pallet of wool as well from the sheep, so I've moved that into the shed. And their reproduction is up to 60% currently, so it's probably going to be another two, three months before they reproduce. And we'll get the next 25 sheep. So let's get the oats sown into this field. Okay, last little bit of oats to sow and we've just about got enough seed. We won't have enough to do the grass field so we will need to go up to the store and get another bag of seed to be able to do that. So that's that past done. I've got that tiny bit down there I missed and then just that last little tiny bit up there I just missed as well. And that's this field done. We don't need to spray herbicide on this one because it's a ploughed field. So the, there won't be any weeds growing this year. Uh, but we will need to go over it with the rollers as well to get the uh, little bit of extra bonus. So well, that's that job done. So yeah, we'll uh, drop this off. I'll get it switched to grass first. Um, unload the fertilizer, said, because we don't need the fertilizer for the grass field because it's already pretty much fully fertilized. I think it'll be a complete waste of time wasting fertiliser. So 151 litres of grass. I'm pretty sure that's not going to be enough to do this entire field. And I'll just double check. I'm pretty sure we don't have any more seed here. Yeah, there's none. There won't be any in the new shed. So yeah, we'll have to go up to the store and get a bag of seed. And what I probably will do is take the pickup truck and I might put these two pallets of eggs on that we've got and take those to sell. And just double check the actual price. Uh, the price for eggs currently is 
it might actually be quite low yeah it's not probably worth selling them we are right down here so yeah we won't take the eggs we don't need the money at the moment we're not desperate i'll put them get them out of the way so i'll go and grab a bag of seed and then we can get this uh grass field sown and then go over the outfield of the rollers okay so i'm back from the store with two bags of seed that should give us plenty for the grass and also doing the soybeans next month so that's 830 litres in there so we'll get this one sown with grass now uh, we won't need to roll this feed it'll just be the oats um pretty sure we do need to roll the oat we did roll it last time i'll double just um i will double check yeah so the oats will need rolling actually showing the grass will need rolling as well i might not have the uh not all crops need rolling mod installed because uh, i started a new mod folder when i set this series up so that may be one of the mods i've missed um, enabling on this save game so i probably will roll this one then as it's showing it requires rolling we'll only have to do it once for the grass and then it shouldn't need doing again at any point Last little bit of grass to sow, and that's another job for today all done. So we're down to 60% seed left. Now, which will probably be plenty for the soybeans. I don't know if we'll get another field in before the end of the planting season. Uh, which will be May, I think, the last month we can actually sow any crops. Uh, but that is all the grass done, so that should start growing away and be ready for sometime in the summer for its first cut of hay. And we'll get the drill completely filled back up, as we're going to need it for the soybeans next month, which we'll need the fertiliser for as well. We'll get this, the drill put back away. The next job is to go over both fields with the rollers so we can get the extra bonus for having the fields rolled. Uh, we obviously won't get the mulching bonus this time because there is no crop to mulch uh, previously. So we'll only get the 97% full bonus rather than the 100. I'll just drop this back in here. And then we'll get the rollers out. And we'll get both of those fields rolled then. And then what I may do is may look at getting a cultivator and cultivating the oil seed radish in today. So it's ready for next month. Now we've also got the two containers we need to take up to the store and sell. So we can get the money for those. And also I'll need to check on the greenhouse, make sure that's got some water. I'm pretty sure the sheep are fine, so we don't need to worry about the uh, sheep at the moment. Um, actually, they might need a bale of hay, because I think their bale that was in front of the feed trough is now gone. So we might need to give the sheep a bale of hay. And also check on the chickens as well. Because we are up to 500 chickens, and their feed is going down very fast. I topped it up just before I started recording this episode and they're all already nearly down to 500 litres and we're not even at midday yet so we're going to have to make sure I keep an eye on that to keep that topped up. So I'll get this field uh, all rolled because it's as you can see there's not much difference in texture change but it is actually rolling on this one. <laughs> It's one of those jobs, it doesn't look like I'm actually doing anything, but it is having an effect on the field. So I'll get this done, I'll 
probably get the other field done as well and then we'll come back and see what else we can do for today okay so I'm just finishing off the rolling on the oat field the grass field's all done I've got one last little bit just down here which you can see looking at it this direction if you can just see that dark patch uh, but most of the time it's very difficult to actually see the difference between the two textures so that should be most of it done at least so I've got one tiny little patch there and a little patch there and like you see on this one it's it's patchy with the fertilizer but I won't bother adding any additional fertilizer to those bits um, as it'll probably be a waste of time So there was a tiny bit just up here I missed somewhere so it's extremely difficult to uh, see where it is I think we've just gone over the top of it so yeah so that's that bit done so we've got one more bit just down here and that's all the rolling done and this field as well fully fertilised and the grass field fully fertilised as well so no further fertilising on these two fields until after we do the harvest right so yeah that's all the rolling done actually there's a slide bit on that corner we're not going to worry about that so we'll get that all folded up get the hood back on So next we'll take the two containers we've got, we'll take those up to the sell everything container and get those sold. And then what I think I may do is get the tree harvester over to this area here and clear the trees to the right of this shed and then start clearing around the backside just to open a bit more space so we can get another building in. Uh, I'm going to leave the cultivating on the soybean field until next time so we can get that cultivated to work the oilseed radish in then we'll get that sown with uh, soybeans next time. So what I want to do is remove, start removing these trees, say this side of the that building there and start opening up this area a little bit, this side of the shed so we can potentially get another building in, uh, get a workshop possibly built and then open up some space for the horse paddock or horse shed stables uh, whichever we decide to build uh, so we want to get in the map which is just around here i'll we'll get that trailer dropped off and we'll hook up the other two with the containers on so both of these are full to 100 percent So we'll get these sold. I'll buy two more 9 meter, 20 foot, uh, 30 foot containers. Uh, so then we'll come back. Uh, one thing we do actually need to do is try and get some way of getting fuel because the tree harvester is desperate need of refueling. I think there's only about 50 odd litres left in it. So we'll need to look at that as well. Right, so let's see how much we get for these two containers. That's the first one, 26,928, and then 23,309. So quite a big difference between those two. That's like over 3,000 difference between the two containers. I presume one of them must have had a lot of more smaller pieces in than the other one. So I'll get two more containers, I'll get those loaded up and we can get back to the farm and while we're here as well just have a quick look in the store see what we've got in in the way of fuel containers to get some fuel over to the tree harvester uh, so we go miscellaneous, I've got, I've got the, uh, the mod installed now which puts all this in alphabetical order <laughs> I should remember now that it's 
you get used to it being in one place. So I do have the mobile fuel tank, which we could put on the back of the pickle. That's 525 litre capacity, which is not too bad. Uh, other options, obviously, a TLX 20 turner, which you don't have. Uh, yeah, looking at it, I think the mobile fuel tank will be our best option. So we'll keep it standard colours. I'll buy one of those. I'll probably come back down with the pickup truck, get that put on the back, and then we can get that reef uh, filled up at the gas station. Yeah, it is one of those you can. Oh, we can put it. Oh, no, I need to put the containers. I don't know if we'll fit that on as well as the containers. Could potentially put it on the back of the truck there, but I don't know if it will stay there. It is one of those you can pick it up by hand while it's empty. Uh, well, obviously you can't pick it up by hand when it's full. So I'll get these two containers on and maybe I'll have to squeeze it on the back of one of the trailers so we can take it back with us now rather than come back with a pickup. Okay, so I've got two new containers loaded up and I've managed to fit the mobile fuel tank onto the back of well the front of the second trailer so it just about fit on the a-frame at the front and it, the strap even though it doesn't go over it, it does pick it up so it shouldn't fall off <laughs> at least um, now I think to fill that we need to actually enter it don't go too close to the actual uh, <laughs> fuel point I'm pretty sure we need to actually look, enter it like a, we would a vehicle. And there we go, we can fill it. So we can get 525 litres in here. Now uh, it should be plenty to fill the tree harvester. I don't know if we can empty into another tank with this. So if we was to build a fuel tank at the farm, I don't know if we could overload from this into that. So we could... Uh, just use this to refill the fuel tank at the farm for other vehicles and then use that one specifically just for the mobile refueling of uh, the tree harvester okay so we're down to 47 litres now uh, we was down to 50 and we've used like, 3 litres of fuel just driving over to here from where we'd left the tree harvester so this does get through the fuel quite a bit so we can now refuel all our equipment using the mobile fuel tank and at some point I would like to get a fuel point put in on the farm and I say well I won't do it where we buy the fuel direct we'll pick it up and then overload into it if we can okay so tree harvester fully fueled 360 litres so let's get these trees or make a start on getting these trees cleared we won't fill both containers today, we'll just make a start on getting the uh, this gap opened up. And we'll probably finish filling them next time and get them sold. Well, this should be the last tree to finish filling this current container. So we've opened up a decent space there. What we'll probably need to do is just work out exactly what space we need for the... Uh, paddock, all the uh, all the stables for the horses, and I'll probably do that and try and work out where exactly it's going to go and kind of mark out an area for that. And then we know which trees we need to clear for next time, or uh, after that. So no rush to get that done because obviously we're not going to get uh, the horses until after we've har harvested the oats or baled up uh, some straw. Uh, we do have a couple of thousand liters of oats left in the silo. Uh, that we didn't sell over winter so if the barley is ready before the oats and we can get the straw off that and we could potentially get the horses in before the oats field is ready to harvest um, but I'm pretty sure oats generally grow quite quick on uh, FS22 so they should be ready for we have a look so Oats will be ready for July. A barley should be ready for June. We planted that last year. Um, I can't remember if we did the barley in September or October. If we did the barley in September, then it'll be ready in June. If not, it'll be July as well. 
So they're going to be around about the same time for the oats and barley. So that's that container filled. Now I'm going to switch this off. I'll probably get the other one filled up for next time. So I might go through. I'm not even sure if I'm going to put the horse stable building over this side. I was kind of thinking possibly at the back of this shed over here. Um, but I may change my mind for that when we uh, come to have a look at putting it in. So we've opened up uh, another area here anyway and we'll continue working our way across. Probably down towards this road and then down the back of that new field that we've ploughed in. And I'll get all this opened up. At the moment we don't desperately need any more buildings for storage for equipment or anything so we'll probably hold off putting anything else in until we actually need it because it'll be a waste of money at this time. Although we do have 130,000 and another probably 25, 26,000 in that container to go. So we'll just quickly check the sheep. Well they've got plenty of water, they have got plenty of feed, well I will just give them another of hay and we're going to have about 388 litres of wool in that pallet if we just grab the skid steer which I've left over here and we'll get the bow spike on give these sheep a bale of hay and then just have to check the chickens again because they're definitely going to need topping up Uh, when I skip through the night, well, skip through from January, I had to sit there with the tractor on the hooked up to the trailer and just constantly keep topping up the uh, feed trough every so often. Because it really does not last long when you've got 500 chickens in there. 1,000 litres is just nowhere near enough. So it's one of those, it either needs the capacity of like the total capacity of chickens being reduced or the feed trough just increased slightly just so it lasts more than a month before it uh, needs topping up again so we've got plenty of hay in there so when we do get the horses we'll have the hay, the oats and then some straw from the barley or the oat field or both. So we'll have everything they require. Uh, by then as well we probably won't be far off being able to get the first cut on this grass field. So we'll just quickly double check this. So yeah, chickens are only down to 375 so we'll go and do that. And the sheep are fine. The water should last till next month so we don't need to worry about topping that off. Uh, we'll actually check the greenhouse. Do we need to top the water up on that? Yes, we could do that. It's down to red. I will drop this. I'll uh, put the skid steer away and we'll get in the John, on the John Deere and then top up the water. We might as well do the sheep as well as we're going about it. Get that dropped off and we'll get on the John Deere. I did say about building the pressure washer actually. <laughs> it's one thing we could do with doing. Uh, we can always move that if need be. So just put one down somewhere so we can use it. Uh, what I'll do first is I'll do the chickens. It looks like we've got another full pallet of eggs. Uh, the rest of the sorghum should last us until June, July, uh, when we can get the barley. I just hope there's we get enough barley off that field then to keep the chickens going until next year. Uh, there was a bit of water left in the tanker, so I've topped the sheep's water up. So we'll just do the greenhouses and that'll be uh, us all done for today. So we'll be back in June to get the soybeans planted, oil seed radish uh, 
cultivated in first and then we'll sow the soybeans and then possibly just continue clearing a few more trees So two should be enough to keep the greenhouse going. Uh, it's over 5,000 litres in there, so that should be plenty. So what I'll do is probably leave this here for now. And we're going to get this pressure washer built so we can get the uh, this tractor at least cleaned off and then put, put away. Okay, so we'll just put the pressure washer just probably on the corner of this building for now. So we want tools... Uh, we'll just go with the steel as it's the cheaper option. And we'll drop that there. Okay. We'll probably move this to a different position once we've uh, cleared a bit more space. At least gives us a place now we can actually clean our equipment off before we put it away. And there we go, our John Deere 710s is looking nice and clean. I know that'll probably keep a few of you happy though watching. <laughs> and I think I did have a few comments saying my equipment's uh, could do be having a good wash. Right, so job done, and I think we are all done for today. So, yeah, next time we'll be. I did say. I think I said June earlier. I mean, meant April. I'd rather get the soybeans in as early as possible so they'll be ready earlier. So, yeah, we'll be back in April. We'll get that done. And see what other jobs we can get done as well for next month. So, yeah, let me know on your thoughts on the workers. Um, potentially getting, like, housing before we can hire workers or get production buildings running. And stuff like that so let me know let me know what you think about that in the comment section i really appreciate that um and your thoughts and opinions on that and i hope you have enjoyed this episode if you have then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up i really do appreciate that and if you've not yet subscribed to this channel then please do um we've got more farm simulator 22 content coming up with the let's play series and live streams so again a big thank you for watching and i'll see you all in the next one thank you again goodbye